All right. Okay. Thank you. So, this is our abacus training. And as I was saying earlier, um, even after we do this training, it's going to be important that you work with someone in actually practicing using abacus with someone who knows how to use it, who is shadowing you, um, so that you can make sure that all of this stuff. Go ahead. I'm just getting closer. Okay. It's just blocking the screen. <laughs> but it's fine. Um, so make sure that all this stuff makes sense in, as you're actually practicing it. So. Okay, so how to log into Abacus? Basically, there's an icon on your desktop that says Abacus Win or the Abacus Remote Server, and um, you'll click on that. And then, one thing to note is if you're inactive, it might like you to log you off, and we're still trying to work on fixing that. But um, as of now, um, it's possible that you might get logged off, and you can just log back on afterwards. And this is the login screen that it's going to give you. So you can enter your username and password, which is usually your two initials. Um, but if you're not sure, you can ask um, any of the attorneys, and they should help you find what your login is. Um, and the reason each person has their own login is because you can't be logged. Two people cannot be logged into the same username at one time. On that basis. So. Um, on Abacus, there are two types of screens that you're going to be using. And it's really important to know the difference between the two of them because um, this is where Abacus is going to start getting confusing. Do you want me to start over again? Mm -mm. Okay. So there's contacts and matters. And basically, um, the color coding here is on purpose. Matters are gold screens and contacts are blue screens. So when you think of a, a gold matter screen, you should think of the principal applicant's page. They're basically their case page is the gold matter screen. And um, it's only for, for, as for right now, how we're using Abacus, it's you're only creating matters for the principal applicant in a case. And so if you sign a new retainer with a new principal, then that's the matter screen. And then contacts is for everyone. Everyone has their own like basic contact page, including the principal applicant. So the principal will have both a contact page and a matter page. And the matter page for the contacts for the principal's case, will have contacts linked to it for everyone in that case, including his or herself, derivatives, law enforcement, and therapists, and whoever else you may have a contact for is linked to that matter screen. Um, so that's really that's the main um, base of Abacus of understanding how it works together, and um, it's really important too because uh, I've seen some people create a contact as the principal screen and it doesn't work that way. So you have to think of the matter page, the gold matter page is the principal applicant's page and then the contacts, uh, each person has their own contact page. Um, and basically this whole presentation is explaining how to create and use and interact between matters and contacts and then how that creates a system that we can all use to help each other in our cases. Um, so that basically whoever calls in, we can find them on Abacus using this system. Um, so that's why it's so important that like, right after your intake you should be creating your Abacus profile for the case, which includes the matter page filled out as, with as much information as you know, plus a contact page for each derivative and the applicant filled in completely so that if they call tomorrow, even one of the derivatives will be able to find that derivative um, based on their contact page. And it, that's also really important for when we get mail, because mail is not grouped by family, so we'll get random, like, one derivative comes alone, and if that contact page is not updated correctly, we won't be able to track whose case that is and who the contact is. So, continuing. Um, this is what a contact page looks like. Over there on the left side is what your screen will look like when nothing is else is open. It'll just have your name, and then there's a bunch of tabs on the top that we're going to be talking about. And then the second part is I opened a contact screen. So I just made up this Joe client for this presentation. So that's his contact page, is Joe client, and that's basically his, with just contact information, just as you, it sounds like. Um, and all of the searches on Abacus are, there's different types of searches in different databases, and in Abacus the setting is first letter. So basically, we have to all enter names the same exact way so that they can be found. So we're not entering Joe client. It's always going to be last name, last name, comma, first name, first name. 
since Abacus searches on only the first letter, it goes by first letters, not by the general idea of the name. So, if, like for example, if I'm entering myself, I need to write Hanson, comma, Jessica Ray, not Jessica Ray Hanson. Otherwise, I won't find it. So, um, but on the contact page, it, you don't have to worry about that because it gives you spaces for last names, first names, and middle names. It's only on the matter page when you're entering info that you have to write it last name, last name, comma, first name, first name, or middle name. So um, to find a contact, and most of the time when you're searching for something, you're going to search in the blue contacts because, like I said, the matters are only for principles, so that excludes all derivatives. You won't be able to find those in the golden matter screen searches. So if you're looking for any random person, you should look through contacts. So you click on the very top of the screen. It's really tiny, but there's a contacts little icon, and you can click on that, and then it comes up with a query, and you just start typing the last name, and they'll pop up and um, should be able to find it. So this is the contact screen. It displays all of their contact information, their immigration stuff, like A number, social security number, passport information, marital status, and income, staff assigned. And to the best of your knowledge, after the intake, all of this should be filled in. The only section that we don't really fill in is like height, weight, and hair color and all that, because that's for the naturalization much later but everything else should be able to be filled in after the intake stage. Um, and then the clients, the blue contact matters, also give you the opportunity to write notes, but we do not record notes here because all of the notes for the case should be saved under the golden matter screen for the case. So if you save a note here, it's going to get lost, and when you look for it in the matter case page, you're not going to see it because it's only under the contact. Um, one thing is when you make a note, which is not on here on this presentation, but when you make a note, it pops up with a little box and it gives you two slots for um, two fields to write in information and it's contact and matter. So if you want to be completely safe, you can write the same name in both fields and it'll pop up later when you're searching. It'll pop up both in the blue screens and the gold screens. But um, as a standard practice, the only place they need to be is in the matters, the matter screen. So that's why it says client note screen, do not add notes here, add notes to linked matters only. The only time when I add a note to a specific client matter or contact page is if I have some sort of like really important information about the contact information that I can't save in the matters page. And I'll say like, this person is about to move to a new address on this date and here's gonna be here's her new address up, you know, after this date or something random like that. So but as far as notes about the case, that shouldn't go here. Um, so then at the top of the blue contact screen, there's also several tabs. So we just went through the notes tab and now are the linked matters tab. So when you click on linked matters, you should see everything that's connected to that client as far as derivatives um, and other names. So in this case, this Joe client has three separate cases with ICWIC. He has a U visa case, an adjustment case, and a naturalization case. And all three of those cases are listed under his name. Um, and this is an example of a contact could be anyone. In this case, it's a client, but it could also be a police officer. So if this is a police officer's folder and you click linked matters, it's going to give you a whole list of every single client that we have who is working with that police officer. So the linked matters can be whatever principal applicant is working with the contact. It'll give you a list, and you can double click on it and then be transferred to the matter page. So we'll talk about that later. Come on. And then, yeah, so like I said, just click, click on the linked matter you want to work on, and it'll pop up the matter page for it. Well, um, and then when you double click, this is what will appear. So the matter pages are gold or tan colored. And um, this golden screen has all the info about the actual case. So it has notes, linked documents, like the forms, linked events, which are really important. Um, and each golden screen represents its own retainer contract. So like one U visa case, one adjustment case, you know, one consular processing that is separate from a U visa case. So this is his, you, th this one in this example is his adjustment case. You can see it where it says case type. I should have like a pointer stick or something, but um, it's adjustment case. The status is open. The staff assigned is me, and the attorney is Susan Boyer, although that has since changed. Um, Todd edited that, so they're flopped. Um, and it has a bunch of information in it. And this whole presentation is saved on the server, so you guys can kind of like look through it to see it like closer up when you're going to be working on Abacus. 
but the matter screen also has its own full set of tabs. That's different than the contact screen. So here's an example of a note. And notes are super important because we're required to take, write a note of anything that happens in the case as its own separate note. Because that's how we keep track of the cases. And like, if I am not able to be here for three weeks, like Monica's out for three weeks or two weeks, but since she takes good notes, if any of her clients call, we can help them because we know what the updates are in the case. Mm -hmm. So if the client comes in, if the client calls, if we get something in the mail for the client, we'll always write a note about that incident. And so um, remember what I said there's two, two fields, there's name and matter. So in this case, they're both filled in. So that means the, this note will be filed under the blue contact screen for him and under the matter screen for him. But you don't have to fill in the name screen because if you fill in the matter screen, it'll, it'll save all of the notes in the matter. So it's up to you. We haven't, there's not really an established procedure for that yet. So um, sometimes, when, as we learn more and more, Suzanne from the LA office will send out a new procedure that we all have to do. And there's not any set procedure for that yet. The only procedure is never save a note that only has the name filled in. Because if the, if the matter is not filled in, it's not going to save under the case. So matter has to be filled in. And then there's a type field, and there's a ton of different types of notes. There's like walk in, phone in, phone out, mail in, mail out, email. Um, FBI, finger, you know, all sorts of things that have to do with whatever the note is. So you can classify your note, and it automatically gives you the date of the note. These are all the types of notes. Um, so there's a lot. But once you start doing it, you'll memorize them, and you won't have to like click and look for it, because you can just start typing and it'll fill it in for you. So the most common ones are phone in and phone out when you are doing the lot of phone calls. Um, there is an urgent note category, and that's for if there's something that's super important and you want whoever to op whoever opens that next to see that note first, you can use the urgent category. <laughs> so that's what that's for. Um, and then when to add case notes? Always. So anytime you do any work related to a case, add it as a note, um, because we work as a team. So it's really important that we know the most recent activity in the case so anybody can help on the case. And so yeah, that's basically how to add notes. The, now we're going to go into how to add a new case, which I don't know how much you guys will be doing this, but um, it is important to know how, just in case you have to. For I know you, Elizabeth will be doing it because we do like lunch duty on Monday through Friday, and I think you've got Fridays. Okay. And um, during lunch duty, we pretend not pretend, but we act as an intake coordinator. So from 12 to 1, one day a week, we'll be um, doing new clients and stuff. So when a client calls, which I mean, I guess this is good for everyone. If you're ever doing, if you're ever answering the phones, when a client calls who is a new client and wants to start a case with us, we always add their case and give them their new case number so that they can fax us their report with their case number on it. And so this is how you add a new case. Basically, you have to add a new contact, add a new matter, and then link them together. Because um, the principal applicant will always have a contact and a matter screen, and um, this can be tricky because if you don't, if it's not um, categorized or written correctly, people in the future won't be able to find it. So it's really important when you're talking to the client to ask them for like the exact spelling of their name and everything like that, and always to get two last names and two first names, unless they physically don't have one, um, which is very rare, but. Um, yeah, so we can start on that. So you can start either either way you want. It works. There's the way I'm. It's explained here is not the only way to do it. You can either create the contact first and then create and then create the matter and link them, or you can create both separately and then find one and link it to the other. I mean, you can do it in any order you want. But basically, the three steps are creating a matter, creating a contact, and then linking them together. So just the order it is here is first I created a contact. Um, so you can, you click on contacts and then it'll come up already with a list of names, but that's just because Abacus always opens it with the last name that you were using. So don't let all those names confuse you that you don't have to do anything about that. Just click add. So in all of the forms or the functions of Abacus, there's always going to be two choices, which are okay and add. And if you click add, you are creating something new. So just keep that in mind. Anytime you click add, it's going to birth a new abacus baby. So if you're just trying to confirm something, just click OK. 
So add means you're creating a new thing. And um, so you click add on the contact page, but it's also important to check with the client first to make sure it's not the first thing they called because it could be that they're already in here. So if you want, if you want to, first before you add, you can search them and make sure they're not in Abacus first before you add them. So you add them, um, and then when you click add, the first thing it's going to do is ask you what type of person you want to add. So if you're adding a new client, it's going to be client. So you can click, you can just type client and it'll pop up, or you can scroll and find client. There's also a derivative, counselor, police officer, and there's like all sorts of different types of contacts you can add. Um, what popped up here is just, um, this is actually a law enforcement officer, his little contact page. So you can click client or write client and click OK, not add. <laughs> Because if you click add, you'll be adding a new category of person. Okay. So click OK, and then um, it'll pop up another screen and click OK again. So in this case, we chose client. And then it'll give you a blank contact screen. So once you are creating a client and the blank screen pops up, you are now racing everyone else at Iquik to create something new. So if anyone else is creating a new thing at the same time you are and you don't click OK before them, you're going to have to start over. Because when this name screen is popped up, it gives you a unique ID. And if anyone else is creating one at the same time, they're going to get the same unique ID until someone clicks save. So if they save before you, you yours will give you an error message, and you have to cancel and start over. So it's really important to just, sometimes what I even do is I'll just, I'll just type like three letters of the last name and click save. And then it, the screen will still be there. So then you can continue filling in the name just to like, save yourself a spot. Um, otherwise, you have to like cancel and then start all over again. So um, enter something and then click save. And then click enter both last names and then first name, middle name. Usually when you're creating one, you can also enter the names, date of birth, and phone number. So that if someone else calls with the same name, at least we have one other piece of identifying information to know that we already have that client or we don't. And then um, click save. When you're done again, and then you can close it. So fill in all the info you have. Um, and then, so in this example, I closed the contact screen and then I opened the matter screen and did the same thing. And then later I connected them. So you can do it that way. But if you notice, oh, it doesn't show up on here. But if you are in the contact screen, remember there's the linked matters tab. If you click on linked matters tab, for this example, we just created it, so there's not going to be anything there, but there is a button that says Add. So you can click Add, and it'll pop up with a list of matters you can choose from. Then you'll just have to click Add again to create a new matter, which will link back to the contact. So like I said, there's the three steps that can go in any order of linking and creating. But in this example, I created a contact, closed it, created a matter, closed it, and then opened either one and linked it to the other one. So. It can get confusing, but it's also cool because it, no matter what you have open, you can always start from that point. So, um, so in this example, close the contact screen, open the matters icon, icon, and click add again. And it's the same same process, except when you're creating a matter, the co the type of matter is different because it's not a type of person; it's a type of case now. So, if you're if you're creating a new client who just called, the type of case is going to be brief service. If there's you brief service. I think U brief service is the main one, but there's also U visa, naturalization, AOS, I mean all the different case types. So that's the type of matter. And then click OK again. And um, this is the this is the part where it's really important to enter the last names first and then comma and the first names so that it's searchable by anyone. And um, click and this is again the same thing. If you don't click save fast enough, someone else will get it. So just Type a little bit and click save as quickly as possible. Or, I mean, if you can type really fast, just type the whole name and click save immediately and then fill in the info. And usually if you're creating a matter, you should fill in the name and the file open date, which is right below the name. And if you type a capital T into any date field, it will put in today's date automatically. So you can just, just click T or write T and it will fill it in. And then location, you can write SF if you want. Um, and then save it. So then after you save it, you'll notice there's this whole section of contact information that says not linked like over and over and over. And this is where you can link it. So you can either clink, click on one of the blue not linked things to, click, to link it, or you can go to linked names, which is the sec third tab over, and add the 
add it there. So I think I show this. Yeah. So in this example, I went to linked names tab, and at the bottom of the screen, there's a thing that says add link. And then remember, add you're always creating something. So in this case, you're creating a link, and then so click add link, and it'll pop up with a list of all the different um, contacts. So in this example, I drew like a no sign over add because if you click add, you're going to create a new contact. So in this case, you're not adding anything. You're just linking something that's already there. Um, so then you search for your client, which if you're the only person who's been working on this in that few moments, it'll be the first one that pops up because you just, work, you just created that contact. And that's what happened to me in this case. So my client that I wanted to link was the first one that popped up. And then you click OK. And then it's going to prompt you to ask you what type of link it is. So if it's the principal applicant that you're linking to its own matter page, then it's just going to be applicant. And the confusing thing here, which I still don't know why it does this, in this link part here, when you're linking the two together, it gives you a chance to either pick applicant or client. So the common thing you would think would be client. But if you click client, it doesn't work. So I guess it thinks that client means like client therapist or something, not our client. So you have, to, you have to categorize it as applicant when you're linking the contact and the matter together. Even so, if it's like a brief service person. Or yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but applicant is only for the principal applicant. Mm -hmm. So the, the, types of, the types of links are applicant, derivative, family member. It's basically what is the relationship between the contact and the matter page. Mm -hmm. In this case, it is the applicant itself connecting the two things with itself together. So applicant. So basically, it's weird. It doesn't show this here, but when you first, when this thing first pops up, you have to write in the, app, the, the first field, and the second field is blank. So what you have to do is either press tab or click down to the second field, and it automatically fills it in for you. But, um, and you can click OK and save it as is. But one thing that's nice to know is the description field, the second field, you can write whatever you want right there. So like, in my cases, when I have like eight derivatives, I, I always um, write descriptions of who the derivatives are. Like I'll write derivative dad, derivative mom, derivative brother in the description because you can write whatever you want. It's only the first field that it, you have to choose from a list of choices. So then you click OK and then it will appear there as its own line. Under, um, so in this, this is, looks confusing but I have Abacus open two separate times. I have the matter screen for the person open and the contact screen for the same person open and they're both linked to each other. So when you link a contact in a matter, no matter what you open, you'll see the link to the other one in it, in both of them. So, yeah. It's gonna, it'll make sense once you start using it a little more, because it is really confusing at first, but it, it makes a lot of sense as you're working on cases, because maybe if there's just one link to another, it seems kind of weird, but when you have like six derivatives, a police officer, and a therapist, then it's one matter with all those contacts connected to it. And then when you open any of those contacts, it'll link you back to the, the original case matter. So now you can create cases. So it says you can link multiple names to one matter and multiple matters to one name. So that means for the first part, when you're linking multiple names to one matter, it's say it's a UVISA case that has all these people working in the case. But also, if I was a client for UVISA, and now it's three years later and I come back to ICWIC, I can have two matters, because I can have my UVISA case, and now my adjustment case is a separate matter. So both of them can have multiple things on them. Um, and yes, so that's just how to create them. So we're moving on with Abacus Functions. Can I ask a question? Yeah, of course. So when you created the contact, and then you created the matter to then link them, mm -hmm. when you created the matter second, did you get a new ID number? The matters have distinct ID numbers from the contacts. So okay. basically, each matter has its own ID, and each contact has its own ID. So anytime you create anything new, it has its own separate ID. So what happens yeah. when you link them? When you link them, it's basically just you can access one through the other, but they're two separate things. Okay. Yeah. So then which number are you giving the client? Oh, good. that's a really good question. We're giving the client the matter ID number because it's their case number. Okay. So it's, see where it says RO file number right underneath the name? And it has the year, so it says 12- and then four digit number. Mm -hmm. That's their case number. That's their abacus case number. Because the contact case number is actually... Um, 
it might be visible in this presentation, but Todd, our IT technician, actually changed the function of Abacus so that the contact ID number is not visible to users. So we can't even see that whatever whatever Abacus assigns to the contact, we don't even know. Just the only reason we know is because if we do it at the same time as someone else, it doesn't let us. But this is the only case number you can actually see. So yeah, good question. And actually, when you're searching for a case, when you first click the matter screen and it gives you that like query list, you can either search by the name, by last name, or you can click on the matter. And if you know the case number, you can search just by the case number, which could be even faster. So, but we'll, we'll get to that in a minute, I think. Or maybe it's at the beginning, but I'll show you guys. Um, so we already did this, we did this. Okay, so moving on with functions. So this um, is also has to do with adding new people. And this is really helpful for derivatives, um, because a lot of times you'll have four derivatives that all live in the same home, same income, same family number size, and same phone number. And to have to enter that information like six times would take forever. So you can actually clone a contact or a matter. And cloning a matter is not going to be common, because that's only if you're creating a new type of case for, this, for an already existing client, which is not going to happen very much. But when, you're, when you just finished an intake and you're adding all these derivatives, you can clone the contact, the original contact, so that you can not have to type everything all over again. So um, basically what you do, in this case it was a contact screen open. So in order to create, to open a new matter, okay, this says matter, but it's, it's open on a contact page. When you open one of the matters, you either have to be, so in order to do this, you have to be on the tab that's the furthest over. So you can't see it on this, the way the screen is open, but in this case, you would have to be on the demographics tab, which is the very first one, where it shows the whole profile. On the bottom of the profile of the contact screen or the matter screen, there's a button that says clone. So it is important to not click that unless you really want to, <laughs> otherwise you're gonna have like clones floating around and it's gonna be confusing, but um, <laughs> This example clones a matter, which is not that common, but it's the same exact thing as if you're cloning a contact, it's the same process. Um, and again, I made this presentation when we first got Abacus, so I should go back and update for all the new stuff we've been learning. Um, basically, you could clone, and then you retype the name, and it'll give you a new case number. And then you just click save, and then it'll save. are you sure you want to save as? And you click yes. And then you can, for this example, um, this was an example of she had a, a previous case and now we're creating a different type of case for her. So it's like a new case type, a new retainer sign date, and um, could be a new attorney and everything. Um, and say if this was a new visa case that we closed and now we're opening a new adjustment case three years later, when you clone it, at first there's going to be a closed date like filled in, a file closed. So you want to erase that since it's a new case that you're opening. Um, so basically, it's creating the same case with the same person, but it's a different case number for a new retainer. Um, and then you, so one important thing when you clone something, it's not, you're not cloning the whole linked family. You're only cloning the screen that's open at the time. So if you want to relink it to something, you have to do that again. So this new clone we created is not linked to anything. So I had to go back and add link and link it back to the already existing client. And that's why it has the no sign over add, because the client is already there. We're just linking a clone matter. So you're going to click OK in that case and not add. So, um, and then you go through the same process again. It asks what type of um, case you want, and you fill it in again. And then it's there. It shows up as a new linked type of case. Um, so cloning contacts is actually more common, so I'm going to go back and change this so that it steps you through cloning a contact instead of cloning a matter. But you can clone contacts in the same way, and it's useful for adding multiple derivatives. And the main thing to remember is when you finish cloning it and click save, you will have to relink it back to the, to the original matter. Otherwise, it'll just be floating in space like a derivative by himself, and you won't know whose derivative he is. So, um, you click the same clone, and then basically when you're cloning a uh, contact because it's a derivative, the only thing you're going to be changing is their name, gender, and date of birth. 
but all the contact info is usually the same. Maybe they might have a different cell phone number, but that whole contact thing is the same, just the name changes. And then when you click save, it'll get it'll again give you a pop-up saying, are you sure you want to change the name to this? And you click yes, because it's a different person. By cloning it, it's not erasing or changing the original contact at all. So, and then link it back to the matter again. Which I should, we're gonna definitely go over this and show you how to do it so that it makes more sense. Um, maybe if, if you guys are shadowing intakes, you could ask to shadow the attorney as they put in all the info and abacus, or you guys could do it for the attorney and then have her, make, you know, just watch over your shoulder or something. So, new topic. Abacus contacts that are not clients. And this is law enforcement agencies, therapists, and the like. Um, also, it can be family members. So sometimes, like, if you have a client who's a child and they have a family member that's helping a lot in the case, that's not a derivative, but um, is a family member, you can add them. And then also, if it is a derivative and a family member, it's going to be linked twice because you're going to have a derivative link and a family member link so that you know that they're family members. Um, and that's more for the purpose of once you start to fill in forms because when you are on the matter page, let me go all the way back. Here's the matter page. You'll see that um, tab 11, the last tab, says family. So whenever I'm filling in a form for this person, um, when I click on the family tab, whatever's written there will autofill into the forms so I won't have to retype it. So if, say you already have a link for the derivative mother. You can, but it's not linked as family, it's only linked as derivative. You can go to the family tab and there's like a space that says mother's information and you can click link and then just relink it back to the same exact already existing contact for the mother, and then it'll be filled in as a derivative and as her mother. So that can get confusing too, but that's something we can show in practice. Um, so here we are again. And creating and editing them is the same process as the regular client contact pages, but there's different formats of contact for different... Um, you can choose what type of... Um, format for the blue contact screen is. I don't know if, I don't know if you guys noticed because there's a lot of stuff on the screen, but back when we were um, when I was showing you how to start a contact, it was a law enforcement agent and the screen was tiny. All it has was his name, phone number, fax, and address. And so we'll use those a lot for for our contacts for the case that aren't clients because we don't need to know like their birthday of the law enforcement agent and stuff like that. So you can choose what format of contact page you want. Um, and these entries that aren't a principal victim or a principal applicant do not have their own matter page. It's just a contact that's, con that's connected to whatever may matters apply to them, but since we're not serving that person, we are not taking the case of the police officer, that's why he does not have a matter page. Only people that have signed a retainer and are is the principal client is going to have a matter page. So, yes. Um, so, for example, the below contact screen is for San Francisco Police Department's certifying official, and the class is LEA, which stands for Law Enforcement Agency, um, and it says, for example, this officer's linked matters include all the cases he has certified for us, and a therapist's linked matters would be a list of all of her patients that we also have as clients, um, and be sure to link your client's matter page to all of her social service agencies. So, basically, it's really helpful to do that, um, to know who's who. When, when the therapist calls and said, I'm calling about this client and we don't know who her client is, we can click on her contact page and see all of her clients that we have. So um, <coughs> most of the really common people are in Abacus. Like Antonio Flores is the certifier for SFP and we have Oakland PDs. There's a lot that are already in there of people we use a lot. But if you have like a new therapist and you want to add her as a contact, that's fine. You can add her as a therapist contact and then link her back to your page. And because it's prop, whenever we get a new therapist that we're using, we pro usually end up referring more clients to her in the future. So we'll probably keep using that person. Um, so and this is just an example of a matter screen's linked names. You can you can't really see, but <laughs> I can see that its linked names are. It's San Mateo DeSuche Attorney Victim Advocate, it's Therapist, the Derivative Daughter, it's Certifying Official, and his self. So there's, uh, can be linked to a whole bunch of different people that are working on the case. Um, that's just to, to give an example. So do you want to link all those people all the time? 
Um, it's the goal. It's it's a lot of work. It's a lot of administrative work, but that's the goal. Um, because I mean, for record keeping and for statistics, it's best to link as and do as much as you can on the case. I mean, on so really, the you're profile. thinking whoever, wherever you send a supplement to be, you send mm -hmm. it to OPD, then that's yeah. who you're linking. Exactly. Okay. Yep. So in this, the next screen shows. Um, well, it doesn't show this, but it's, I'm going to talk about events and deadlines, and this comes in handy for this too, because when you create an event, you have to have a name and a matter in the event, and if it's an event where you need to call a therapist on this date, you can put the therapist as the name, and then the matter can be your client's case, so that you know exactly who you're in touch with, and it'll pop up with her phone number. Maybe. So. Um, this, this next part talks about events and deadlines, um, and there's two places for deadlines. There's three, there are three deadline slots on the main matter screen, just so that they're in your face as soon as you open the matter you see them, but those deadlines don't trigger an alarm, they're just for you to look at. So in order to have an alarm and an event that shows up in your calendar, you also have to add the deadline in the events tab, which is, a, which is the fourth tab over, if you can see it. Um, so we tend to do both. It's a little bit of double entry, but I enter, I mean, I work with Jess Barb as my supervising attorney, and she has me enter everything twice, and I think that's the common, the most common way to do it, just so that you can see it, but it's also programmed into your calendar, too, mm -hmm. um, so that you have that in mind. So in this example, we put a deadline because the Oakland Police Department Supplement B expires on that date. Mm -hmm. So we're going to continue. But there's also a separate events tab for not only deadlines, but any event that you want to create for yourself, um, like a reminder, a follow-up. I mean, I create events for pretty much everything because once you get so many cases, it's hard to keep track of your own cases sometimes. So I make deadlines for pretty much anything that I could think of on the case so that I it like, just automatically reminds me to do stuff. Um, so the next part is how to add an event. And it's pretty straightforward. Once you learn how to add one thing on Abacus, most different types of things you can add have the same exact process. So it's very similar to adding a contact or a matter, but it's faster because there's a smaller amount of information you have to fill in. Um, and then there's a note here that says, just like case notes, only add events to the matter screen, not to the contact screen. So the, the, case, the main case screen is the gold matter screen. That's where you want to add your events. So at the bottom of the events tab, there's a, the add button. Um, and you click that and then this green screen pops up and you have to fill it all in. Um, you can fill in all the fields and then click save and you not only fill in when the actual date of the deadline is, but you can set reminders for yourself, which the numbers in there are days. So 30 means it'll remind me 30 days before and 15 days before. Um, but that's just a little pop-up that comes up in your not on your advocate screen, but in your um, 